Well, everybody is inspired, uh, those who were and who, those who were not at the plenary session, and I'm proposing to start. Today we decided to get together. Uh, these uh, uh, people are IT leaders uh, and different leaders of financial organizations who have large uh, IT systems, uh, conventional IT systems, and maybe non-conventional IT systems uh, that are used, uh, that are uh, discussed in various indus industries, so whether we should make uh, import substitution of those solutions uh, to be uh, independent uh, and to, to have the systems that never break. Uh, and so we would like to get together and uh, tackle this issue from various aspects and uh, see what uh, can be done there. So let me pre uh, introduce uh, our speaker, uh, our speakers. First is Alexander, who is a representative of the bank, uh, of a bank. Uh, it'll be very interesting to listen to him because uh, their bank is in a transition uh, phase uh, and uh, they have some mixed systems. And we also have a, uh, a representative of the MKV, uh, MKV bank, uh, Sergey. And, um, a number of organizations, they have the same challenges, Alexei from MTS Bank. Uh, he Maybe this is the most commercial bank, in fact, uh, so we would like to see his uh, perspective. Uh, and uh, I think that these uh, people just uh, are uh, doing a lot uh, to change their systems. We also have a representative of the exchange uh, and the bank, uh, Andrei. It's a very important uh, uh, organization, and uh, they also have this type of systems. Uh, and Sergey, a rec representative of the VTB Bank, one of the largest uh, state banks, uh, which uh, has uh, various uh, strategic tasks. We were listening to him during the plenary session, and uh, uh, they have quite a lot of uh, import substitution challenges as well. And. Uh, I think that we need to listen to his opinion as well because this is a very big, big bank and an important bank. And my name is Kirill. I'm from Ross Telecom Company. On the one hand, I, uh, we have a great banking experience, but here I am as a moderator, and I'm going to, you know, just not. Uh, I'm going to try not to express my opinion so that our colleagues I can speak more. And I'd like to start with a short question to you. So can you just make a short introduction, just only in a couple of words? Uh, can you formulate your attitude uh, towards uh, a conventional system? So what is the largest component that you have? What is the most important component that you have in your company? And what is the status of import substitution? Just only in a couple of words, so, uh, without providing too many details, so, so that our spectators, so they have a general understanding of who is here and what we're going to talk about. And uh, in order to... Uh, uh, and let us start with Alexander and then go to Sergey and others. My answer is very simple. In the banking uh, landscape, uh, there are two systems that are very highly loaded and conventional systems, which is uh, uh, processing and core banking. These are not new things uh, to you, but uh, for an organization of a smaller scale, for a smaller organization, the, there are different solutions that could be found, you know, out there in the market. But uh, in our uh, bank, uh, we don't have import substitution solutions because uh, they are highly performant and uh, no proposals. We're not a very classical bank. We are actually an exchange that has its own system of uh, uh, trade and uh, not many uh, stock exchanges exist. Uh, we just uh, we looked at what is there in the market, but as our experience shows, is that it's very good that we didn't choose anything. We just only use our own developments. Uh, Input substitution is probably in the database, but everything else is ours already. It doesn't need uh, uh, any phasing out. And also some marketing services, uh, we are developing them and uh, we have programmed, uh, uh, we are using open source technology, so therefore we're feeling quite comfortable about that. Well, in fact, it's true from the point of view of the software, we have also processing and core banking system, but, but we also have, you know, local uh, processing systems uh, and core banking, local core banking systems. We do exist them, but uh, we use uh, foreign database and for large uh, uh, banks, uh, it cannot be substituted uh, for the time being. It's not going to be effective. And this is a great problem. 
uh, on the one hand it's infrastructural pro you know, program on the other hand we also you know have our own infrastructure so let alone hardware there is also some virtual virtualization virtual machines uh, that uh, are filled uh, with uh, great uh, foreign uh, software and uh, there is no great alternative to that uh, but uh, we in any case we will have to switch uh, to local uh, software uh, sooner or later but in our servers everything is virtualized uh, except maybe uh, a few uh, computers and uh, its impact is much wider than uh, the transaction service I'll agree with my colleagues uh, from the point of view of transactions. Uh, it's uh, clear that it's about processing and core banking. And uh, also there is the DBO and uh, software for ADMs, uh, etc. Uh, as for the ADMs, everything has already been substituted uh, in many large uh, banks. It's the same thing. And the lower layer, it's not only databases and w w such things as uh, virtualization, information systems, etc. Everything uh, there is uh, under great challenges and we're just only starting this way. And uh, speaking about us, we uh, have the same uh, things uh, such as core banking systems and processing. For processing, we have local software, and there you can only need to change maybe databases uh, and uh, some other components. But as for the core system, everything there, uh, things are much more exotic because our bank is a happy proprietor of the most ancient installation of the Western of the system equation that we inherited uh, from the last uh, millennium or from uh, from the SBS Agro Bank, we inherited that system, and for the third year in a row, we are actively working on uh, trying to disassemble this uh, monolithic software and uh, working uh, on it uh, very intensively and uh, trying to do the import substitution, but it's not that easy. It's quite a difficult task. Yeah, thanks a lot. I hope that our spectators now have a little bit better understanding of who has uh, gathered here and what their uh, specifics are. You know, Ross, Ross Bank is kind of a uh, bank that ha has its own uh, specifics. Uh, not everybody is lucky to have uh, the system as we have, but uh, it's a great uh, challenge that we are facing today. Now let us do it this way. Let us look at another problem. We have just talked about the tasks. It's clear that we have such tasks as processing, uh, databases, many people, many organizations, they have the Russian systems that have always been Russian. But when we need to say that uh, we only need to substitute database, this is not actually true. It's not uh, that way. Because, you know, just if you take Oracle, for example, or the systems that were uh, created back in, in the beginning of 2000, they were created not as a database, they were created as an execution system uh, that, that has its own architecture. And therefore, the replacement of database is not easy. It's not uh, resolvable. It's not database that we need to change. It's a whole architecture that needs to be substituted. So could you elaborate on that? Uh, you know, because uh, if you replace it, if you replace it, then you replace it with what? So if you substitute it, you substitute it with what then? Can you just uh, go in details about that? Let me tell you about it. In TRBO, uh, we ran into this uh, problem. There are only two uh, uh, systems uh, that have already uh, that are very old systems like a mammoth but you know import uh, substitution is okay but we need to change uh, software because a bank is a system that, which is always growing and when we selected we were selecting the new system it was important for us to get rid of uh, this uh, uh, procedures uh, execution procedures uh, that are based on the old uh, solutions if uh, the task is only just to uh, stop using Oracle, probably it's uh, uh, very difficult to do in the conditions uh, that you have mentioned. Even if you uh, take the logic out of this and use it at another layer, uh, given that it's optimized, you need to rewrite it anyway. It's quite clear. That's why we decided to move in this direction. And I hope that the next uh, 
year and a half we will be successful in implementing this. Uh, I would like to comment. It's quite a question for discussion because we don't even have understanding within our team and I don't even have support uh, from my technical specialists. I think the worst thing which could be done now is just uh, to forget about Oracle, just uh, to wave your hand at it and say, well, let it be. I think other represented of other banks uh, started at the beginning of 2000s and uh, they have been using this infrastructure for 20 years and uh, his infrastructure was used uh, in the it was developed in the 80s I think and that's why we should think if we should spend our money on this it if it's really reasonable. If we just rewrite everything, it will make no sense. But still, we should use the opportunity of import substitution to create a new platform. To create, because import substitution can help us to create the architecture for our organizations, which could be used uh, for the next 15 years or maybe 20 years, it depends on how long such architecture should exist. And uh, it's a window of opportunity, we should use it, and we should explain it to our team and give reasons why we should use this, especially our technical specialist. We had a meeting recently, and we had an argument, uh, because there are some conservatives who say, well, we just uh, should ignore Oracle and we should just move in the opposite direction. You know, I should say that uh, we use Oracle less than our colleagues, but I should say that in our case we use IBM Stack and we use uh, their database and uh, their unique machines and there are analogs to such machines and I think they will not emerge in the future. And I think it's a good chance for us to understand that the system which you which you used and you thought how you can improve it currently I think it's easy to rewrite it than to change any components in this system and you can also change the approach to architecture and maybe you do something which you would never thought of doing in the past and I think it's a unique chance now because now we can change everything and do the right do the right thing and to make a step forward and i think it will determine our future for the next 15 to 20 years i support your opinion completely and i think that our bad situation helped us uh, to find a solution and it's true for different commercial and financial companies because they have uh, demands from the government to uh, develop products for, uh, in the shape of uh, import substitution to substitute foreign products and it's clear that we need to substitute them but fortunately we don't need uh, if we talk about commercial companies they don't have to Re, uh, replace everything to su substitute everything but if we talk about financial companies they have to substitute everything and if we talk about the situation in uh, 1990s and 2000s those companies who uh, provided uh, EVS they were very close to banking systems and they developed uh, their systems for banks for many years but now it's time for banks to develop these systems themselves and they could use them and develop them and it's not an easy question and businesses don't like paying for back offices especially for rewriting it so when we realized that there was no direct substitution and no one would help us, I won't even name those companies who refused. I think you know them. 
but it doesn't help us to meet our demands and uh, with we calculated we have around 1000 transactions which uh, take place per second and these are quite transparent transactions they are real financial transactions and of course uh, we fall behind Sberbank but still we have a lot of them and I see only one option which we can do we need to develop something ourselves we look at the database and we should think what we could do we should uh, create another architecture architecture means that we need to change the programming layer as well and that's why we follow this simple logic it's great that when we created uh, not a channel platform in 2019 we actually used open source for it and it's quite easy to use it because um, it has a different uh, level of processing and now we have substituted 80% there in the landscape and it concerns Microsoft SQL as well and thus we get only the most interesting things there banking processing thus uh, if we talk about our approach to this issue uh, this year in previous year we call everyone to invest in creating new infrastructure developing new approaches using Russian databases and Russian services Russian platform so you're welcome thank you for your attention I think uh, we have a dream and we have reality if we talk about a dream we have been discussing for five years that uh, clouds and uh, all the stuff is is something which we need to create that we need to shift from databases that we should just have a layer for storage and uh, if we have uh, another bad situation uh, we could replace it with sharding or with uh, some similar thing but while we dream about this we also think that we could change the systems and we can rewrite them and we change the logic and we change databases but in reality the situation is a little bit different what we have faced is that we have quite a tough deadline and actually we cannot match our aspirations which we have in our dream and uh, the real situation that we can't exactly rewrite the whole architecture quite fast and invent virtual staking and currently we have to spend a lot of money on development and meet the deadline but in this case it will not look quite pretty otherwise uh, we can make it pretty okay thank you very much so to sum it up we have quite common position we share the same view that uh, when you need to make a step forward first you need to be pushed from the back and thus uh, you need to have deep uh, digitalization uh, change the systems uh, conventional systems uh, so that uh, we can use them for the next 20 to 40 years but on the other hand uh, we have a quite tough deadline and uh, part of us need to meet this de deadline and this is the real situation which we are facing now and could you please share your opinion if we uh, introduce serious changes in the architecture how would it look like uh, not in terms of uh, pretty front front uh, uh, different icons and uh, different pretty things which are usual on the surface but if we talk about the back office about the hardcore and could you please also answer another question 
I'm looking at uh, Alexander, the representative of the Russian vendor. Uh, shall we? Shall we invite vendors or shall we write these uh, systems ourselves and create our architecture ourselves? So let me uh, shape two major principles which we're uh, following in our bank. The first principle, we don't think that you need to rewrite everything by yourselves. Uh, actually, there are already some things which you can already use. It's like a, a shelf solutions and actually they could be introduced in the bank architecture and it would be quite easy and there are some companies who can do this quite well and actually they are not transactional companies they don't deal with transactional systems and they don't deal with accounting and it, accounting could be done a little bit later than transaction but still, we try to do some things independently, which influence competitiveness. And this is some standard modules, which could be vendor ones. And I think it's a normal story. If you recollect, Garter used a uh, term multi-grain services. It means that these are services of different size. They don't have to be microservices. They could be macro services or some small monoliths. And the second principle which we follow is that it's important to see difference between the functional and that you need to do account, uh, accounting independently. A uh, front office should be divided from the back office. And it's uh, important to follow this logic. Otherwise, you would have to change everything yourselves when one of the components fails and doesn't meet your demands and it would need to be replaced with something else yeah i think there are a few answers to your question and uh, i would like to share a few ideas about this if we talk about the objects of critical infrastructure uh, which should be substituted by the first of january 2024 we are going to discuss it later i would like to tell you frankly from the technical point of view if you I have to undergo technical audit on the 2nd of January. I don't think that we will be able to fulfill this task. It's uh, my frank opinion. But we understand that uh, the legislator motivates financial uh, companies to, to do some transition. Uh, steel budgets are shaped and we still uh, implement financial projects actually we prove that we do a lot of things and actually uh, we really substitute uh, foreign uh, foreign products and we are capable of doing this so we don't need to hack these systems and use them actually we have our own products and it's possible to use them but the question is, uh, if we have enough capabilities, not to let the legislature do some half job, that we do something cheap on duty, and uh, we need the deadline, but uh, the product would be of low quality. This is the important question which we need to discuss because if we create good infrastructure it will help us to use it for the next decades we have created the impulse and we get a good investment and I think it's a challenge for the community if we are able to agree with the legislature and to good and create a good product otherwise we just meet their deadline and do something cheap and uh, we might, might not use it for a long time. So some uh, companies uh, have started a long time ago to uh, create the architectures uh, as import substitution. And I think they have good chances 
to use it, um, but I think we need to agree with the regulator. If uh, we talk about vendors, maybe vendors don't want this. Maybe they just expect uh, a lot of money that everybody would just pull money together, uh, provide them with this money, and in this case, they create some beautiful architecture. But we should understand the financial organizations are not uh, as they used to be in the past. Actually, they have uh, promote, uh, actually, they have developed their own competences and they are ambitious, they want to do something independently. They just don't want to pull their money and to pay to vendors. So they're, uh, they're waiting for the vendors to make proposals and those who do not propose it just look at what this process. Most of those who are here, they say that the, the in-house processes have already been uh, launched. Uh, I'm not uh, speaking here about uh, architecture, but uh, it looks like a set of different products and system modules. I mean, the way they are structured today, uh, uh, because currently they are isolated and then they cut uh, in terms of business. So, so there is a module for settlements, a mod module of KYC, there is a module like GL, uh, transactional uh, core. Uh, accounting model, module, another module which is called uh, de de deposit of corporations uh, and retail deposits because those are different uh, deposits and they have their own specifics and besides the typical timing and the processing for the development of these uh, products are different in various depending on the business so, so the you can cut it into these uh, types of separate modules and just make them separate some of them uh, co some components even in traditional uh, systems uh, have already been uh, uh, created there is an ml module authorization module which are all separate we have corporate uh, deposits which is a separate uh, system that has existed for a long time maybe it's not a good architecture but it was made at least in uh, as a single separate module so th this is the way uh, uh, that, that the market is going through but it's another question that this uh, should be uh, usable in containers it should be uh, programmed uh, differently and not not the way as we did it before as for the comment uh, of uh, by andre uh, we spoke about you know the beauty of microservices for many years uh, the question is how far we went uh, um, Ahead, uh, we have uh, different uh, fr front end and uh, back end uh, services which are based on microservices, uh, different uh, internal services. Uh, all these uh, software is based on microservices. Um, they uh, either are either already based uh, or are being switching or are switching to um, microservices. Can you just, uh, you know? Uh, well, for example, uh, can you create like a million uh, microservices instead of one big uh, software? Probably not possible, but in any case, in the product uh, areas, you know, just the accounting core, uh, there you can use microservices, I believe. No problem. Sergey, well, actually, this question is very important. Kirill was asking this question, and uh, which is quite controversial. Uh, uh, doesn't correspond to the major uh, topic, which is the import substitution, transactional uh, import substitution. But uh, a bad IT director would say that I'm making uh, my architecture just only because of the import substitution. No, everything is uh, going to be based on the demand uh, for, of the business. We need to understand that import substitution. Uh, it, there are the, there is also business demand, uh, and there are some risks. And these risks which were imposed uh, from uh, the government, but nonetheless, these are the risks uh, that uh, are existing and especially in the system forming uh, bank, uh, they're less uh, lucky. We are a smaller bank and uh, for us, uh, we, it's e probably easier for us, but uh, um, as for the, what Sergei was uh, telling us, about his company that's uh, exactly the same thing that we do have our major task was uh, to isolate the whole front end uh, through middle to abs and not as a, through a proxy service uh, but as a you know just a absolutely independent uh, structure you turn off the crm then you turn off uh, your back back end but still you can continue working so this should be done but actually the structure was in the beginning made uh, differently but if we make you know just uh, this approach uh, to have product system 
separately, engine separately, uh, you know, decision making system separately, then it can be divided into microservices. But actually, you know, back office is mostly about accounting system. And there, uh, it's a little bit uh, easier. But nonetheless, uh, there is a uh, dependence between them and, uh, you know, just making them absolutely separate is not is not going to be possible. It, it was important thing said here, whether it uh, should be monolithic or not monolithic, whether it's good or bad, you can, you know, discuss on and on, but uh, we all had APIs. Uh, Software, some microservices, some you know, just uh, some had a uh, trouble with microservices. Uh, can you just uh, raise your hand if you have a microservice? We have around, for example, a thousand microservices. Now I'm tired of looking after after all those microservices. Actually, what was uh, in one used to be in one place, and then it was uh, you know. Are broken into microservices and then there is a in this layer of these micro things is a, actually a smaller than the core system but on the other hand this is the payment for our comfort for the convenience and for and uh, the programmers uh, when they don't want to find a mistake uh, they uh, just make another microservice and that they add to uh, as a patch my task as an IT uh, director to, is to protect the business, and this is a resolvable ta task because, you know, the uh, costs are quite manageable and there are less and less risks. Nonetheless, going back uh, to the core banking system, uh, yes, uh, the product engine uh, should be put outside in my, uh, and of course, this is a risk associated that everybody knows about it. And we had, you know, just different uh, discussions with analysts on this topic, but now uh, different uh, failure points uh, have not been included into our knowledge or culture. The middle level of competences is uh, the medium level of skills is going down, is going down. Does everybody agree that the middle level programmers uh, are, you know, just less and less competent? We need to understand that, but we need to understand the realities in which we are living. And, and uh, so when we speak about a product uh, which is going to be put separately from the core banking system, of course, this is workable, but you don't, you, you know, just try to control everything. Just be a professional. If you don't have enough professionals, then you have to be very, very careful because uh, a monolithic system, they're just only conditionally called uh, monolithic, just only because it's uh, one single database. But uh, this database can be broken into uh, different components, uh, execu executable components, and uh, these solutions uh, already exist, and then it's going to be easier. And easier. As for the vendors or not vendors, I absolutely agree that the uh, vendors uh, they are not well motivated. But the question is, so why does the vendor need to change anything? Just have a look at it, really. Oracle. We speak about database of Oracle and things like that. The, for Oracle. Uh, our uh, we are constitute maybe seven to eight percent of business, and here, if somebody would like to make a, a similar product, uh, then it should be economically, you know, substitution with other databases is not going to be uh, uh, viable because, especially considering that you know, the dozens of years money was invested into this uh, class of products and they don't have much motivation. And it's quite clear if you look at our basic products, you know, like messengers, for example, why needed to create any uh, complicated, uh, uh, some com com complicated products. So you can make some corporate uh, messenger, uh, like for example, Teams uh, from Micro Microsoft. But it's not going to be viable economically. You cannot. Uh, it's it's going to be a very difficult job to do, and uh, it's not going to be economically effective. And uh, in our case, we do not believe that we are super ambitious bank uh, that are going to create the software ourselves. So we need to, you know, find uh, the vendors or solutions that, in our understanding, are have uh, the um, prospects for the development. And we need to go on uh, working together and uh, changing uh, the landscape uh, together. But uh, the option of when everybody together with unicorns uh, in two or three years uh, uh, through a concerted action, uh, it's better if we just, you know, plan things for the architecture and do things uh, slowly. And uh, uh, then import substitution sh should come in its own turn. Thank you. You know, after Alexei, it's quite difficult to comment. 
uh, I believe that everything is developing in a spiral and nobody is going to argue the about the debate about the uh, uh, opinion that it's all about architecture but then the question is uh, what is the difference uh, what m prevents us from making apis and modules and there is a abs abs which uh, you know resolves everything uh, in the bank and then afterwards you have some small nuances like for example you would like to create these reports or regulator says you have a new product uh, and then the costs of what is being done is going up and then you know just uh, you can see that uh, you can you're trying to put uh, the processing uh, separately you user interface is going to be separately then we'll say we're going to create our own user interface we don't like the way it is now and therefore it created a lot of different competencies when you can, things are being done in-house uh, but some things can be you know just put together back because there are quite well developed highly developed companies or vendors who can provide us with a good well working uh, product and uh, then it's important for us to set up you know the, the frontiers between modules and use their product then the question is about for example a vendor lock like uh, if we create it then uh, what is going to be the uh, frontier in there then you have to divide the, the company into two or three uh, components. There's uh, to be two or three people who are going to work with messengers, then two or three who are going to work with uh, other uh, products. And then we need to understand what can be entrusted to a vendor. And then we understand that uh, for, for the future, they're not going to cover the whole think uh, then we need, will need a uh, two or three more vendors and then uh, finally we come uh, to developing the competency in-house and we do it ourselves thank you well it doesn't sound very optimistic in my opinion if for example some somebody told me five years ago that the team would write abs i would probably laugh in the face of that person that our team would write an abs because really you know rewriting the main book uh, is uh, doesn't make any sense this is just a commodity and uh, it's not a com there is no competitive advantage in writing uh, the main ledger using some other le uh, stack and uh, on the other hand, this is why I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you the reason why not a vendor. On the other hand, we really wanted uh, to work with a vendor in spite of anything, at least uh, for the basic functions. We really did the calculations, and then finally we got disappointed, and then, then we decided that we're not going to work on that component. Then we went uh, to the solution that, to the decision that uh, we are going to. Uh, develop uh, the whole technology including the main book ourselves and besides for the recent uh, few years rewriting uh, an abs uh, worst thing is for example rewriting offices office applications i only had uh, two very unpleasant experiences uh, two cases uh, this is uh, about you know just uh, very important softwares pieces of software then out of a sudden they stopped working two of them in russia and uh, one is uh, in our daughter bank uh, in our affiliate bank abroad so it means that where you can you know just uh, substitute things you do it but it's not necessary but our policy today is that uh, we do it where it is possible just wherever it's possible to use take control over the code we we start writing uh, the, the that code ourselves or it, uh, the worst we uh, ask uh, the colleagues uh, to write them for us because you know companies they come and go companies uh, s stop uh, using different softwares and then finally we get into a trouble because uh, we need to change things and that be, uh, you understand that people don't like changing things so i'd like to tell you that in this connection there should be some cooperation and it would be great if we could cooperate between ourselves and with the vendors once again, as I have already said, in, it was not possible to do it with the ABS vendors because they have their own understanding. But as for the vendor in processing, here we work uh, 
um, very well currently, and we're going to continue working on that. Just some uh, different operations, like creation of different modules uh, for for the, uh, each other. So we make them for them; they make for us. There are some specific uh, demand for that. That's why, in this case, I don't think that. Banders are good because uh, they require a lot of investment uh, and actually they provided quite stable financing, stable profitability and currently it requires a lot of money and uh, our market is not that big. So we still see that Oracle is an operation and uh, licenses have not been revoked so I don't think that w there is some urge urgency to change everything. I think those who have started creating their own architectures, uh, uh, it's better for them. And definitely we should understand that we should not make some fakes. Uh, and if we do something, we should, good, we should create good architecture and it should be target architecture. And uh, we can also see that we need some independent frontal and back office applications. And if we talk about stable operations, it's true for businesses. Uh, product processes should be independent and accounting should also be different. So all of them should be divided. And we are creating uh, the configuration for them now because this is the key part of our business and that's how I can answer these two questions so module uh, architecture is modulated and uh, seriously segmented and actually it complicates the control of the system and it increases costs but we can't see any uh, other options and CBD is not available currently and hardware is also not at hand now because currently we focus on X86 they are produced in Russia and still there is a question to their quality and that's why we have to have a lot of cabinets and a lot of cases Actually, I think we have some vendors here and we have discussed uh, the issue of vendors and we understand that the world has seriously changed. Uh, previously, vendors used to be monopolies and they could do a lot of things which banks were not able to. But could you please share your opinion? Do you think uh, what is the image of the current vendor to be successful? What sh property should it have? Should they be cloud vendors? So sh what should they develop? Or should they work in a collaboration with banks and fill in your gaps in your services? Or shall they create certain commodities which could be easily integrated in your systems? So could you please describe the image of a successful vendor for the next five to ten years? How shall they change? I think if we talk about vendors, they should be close to customers. Uh, previously, vendors were quite separate from customers. And now, uh, the positive experience which I have is uh, when vendor is integrated in the customer service and it's good. Actually, it's unified uh, in terms of application. It's uh, one of the options. But now we need to move in the opposite direction. So previously they developed a solution which is uh, good for everyone, but now they need to individualize their solutions and uh, to create interfaces which would help them uh, to be used by different customers. And I think the future belongs to the services, uh, cloud services. And we don't only talk about infrastructures and platforms, but the entire systems, architecture. And I think uh, this is true for the near future especially if the legislative uh, 
bills will be enacted and in this case uh, we will have more freedom in doing this uh, when we c could exchange data and i think we just have one step away and we just need to move forward and in this case we would be able to meet the challenges with the book office and uh, it concerns the layers which are not competitive Andrei, you know, currently we have such an interesting time when uh, current vendors uh, do not develop something new and we haven't uh, got any new vendors yet. And actually, currently we develop in different directions and I'm sure that inevitably we will join our forces with vendors and uh, we either join forces with partners and create something new or we turn to vendors in in the past vendors could predict what is required by the by the market and they met 80 percent of the market's needs but currently it's not true and i'm sure that if we uh, if we explain our demands and in this case they will be able to provide something which is required if we talk about hardware it's true for five to seven years but actually it takes them five to seven years to develop this hardware and i said well it's a good chance if it takes uh, this time for you to develop hardware in this case we could predict which is what is required in the future and we could use it and my wish to vendors is to be more client oriented but how we can measure that it's another question i think we speak different languages uh, so they just try to sell us what already exists uh, but we need uh, to make more customized services actually you know everything is going so fast and actually uh, i need to pull my thoughts together actually i worked with a different site with different services and i'm sure that the ideal vendor should listen to clients but still vendors should be motivated and i can't see any motivation for vendors let's imagine uh, says Institute has left the market everybody was happy but still uh, we know that this system is still an operation Gigimon has left the uh, market and clients are used to using it uh, it is specialists are also used to it though I can't say that it's a perfect product but nobody in the market has made anything uh, before they entered our market and after they left our market and I would like to comment on the vendor's activities. I think SES lacked something and there were quite specific features which they had. And when you are a market leader and you don't have competitors, actually it doesn't uh, inspire you to develop. And I talking about the cycles that you should listen to the client and think how to make a top product it's not about us there are some situations when vendors listen to their clients but it happens only in cases when it's really difficult to develop a certain product we are trying to develop our systems for two years already and i think we have moved forward but still i think we're developing very slowly because this market is not that huge and it's not profitable it's not redeemable and I can easily imagine how IT systems are used in the market and, and including the international market I can imagine how it's being done but still it's not sold why because uh, there is no motivation and of course good ideal vendors want investment and uh, they are ready to contribute to new products and conquer the entire market but actually I can't see such vendors in our market talking about core banking systems I studied them for long and NISA and other systems from scientific point of view how they are constructed 
and uh, you also studied that I know and I understand how it could be done on the basic of real practice but it's not needed so you mean there is no enough scale of the market and that's why we can't use it yes there is not enough motivation what should be done and in terms of revolution I don't feel the start of the ID revolution um, actually I'm a little bit upset I expected the revolution to take place but I can't see it. I hoped that there would be promotion of IT technologies and its future development, but in the capitalistic market, nobody inspires vendors to capture the market. They're satisfied with what they have. And I can't understand why we should have a new vendor who would like to play long term. Okay, uh, let's if we remove a core banking system, most of the modules could not be even named by us because they make no sense. If we talk about processing, if you create the perfect process in the planet, because it's not interesting, nobody would do this. That's why I think we should have a partner uh, who can foresee the future, foresee what will happen in five to seven years about uh, in the future and I think they should have ambitions money ambitions it's it's important and other things are just wishes of the customers but for the vendors major stimulus is to earn money and if we don't have this motivation for vendors in this case it makes no sense why they should follow us why they should meet our needs Actually, there is another contradiction. On the one hand, we hear some ideas that we don't have enough demand uh, to pay the creation of uh, two, three new ABS to vendors. We don't have such demand. But on the other hand, uh, there are some organizations who can, who can have such demand but they followed different route they just uh, disintegrate ABS to, to parts and they create their own infrastructure but I think it's just a number of modules so on the one hand they can't pay but on the other hand they divide this but why? I think uh, Actually, uh, this financing is relocated as a payment to IT specialists who actually are staff in these organizations. It, we had 80 IT specialists. Oh, the total team accounted for 80 specialists. And uh, the bank employed uh, 1,700 people. Just imagine, it was less than five five percent but currently if we calculate the team of IT specialists we have 683 people on our team just imagine the number of IT specialists has doubled uh, has increased tenfold and what is the total number of people who work for your bank I think we have around 6,000 people working in our bank so it's even more than 10%, but most of the IT specialists actually uh, they divide uh, front office and they just drink smoothie, you know. Yeah, it's a feature of uh, IT specialists, I think. But if we talk about engineering competences, it's much higher than it used to be in the past. But we don't talk about front end specialists, they will create some new elements of the prospective architecture that's the answer to the question what should vendors do uh, will we still use the same architecture in five years no I don't think so but the question is who will create this infra this architecture what either uh, the marketplace create this independently for themselves or we attract vendors and create the architecture together so I think the future vendor will be the collaborative vendor and they would be ready to share something with the community. So this is the modules, these are the rules for its development. 
I see a lot of representatives of vendors here, but do you have the role of community managers? I don't think so. so but this is what we will need. So we have a collaborative model and an open model. Of course, business, banks have money, but you are competent specialist. You should help to administer this process in the right way. So I think the, uh, there was an idea of open collaboration uh, with the market, but it ended up with the application show. Uh, but actually, I think it mostly concerned monetization. But if we talk about traditional vendors, they are not doing this. I communicated with the representatives of big companies offline, and they say, uh, OK, do it, but I'm sure we, you will not be able to uh, create anything yourselves, and uh, we will just support the EBS. And I think the, the engineering power of the top players is enough, but they disagree. A uh, vendor will just uh, go bankrupt and close down, but the internal vendor will not do this. You know, the only thing which we risk is just to fire the IT director, but the corporation will not lose uh, these services. And this trend has already been has already begun. And vendors either should follow this trend, or participate in this. Uh, they should use a collaborative model. Of course, it's quite difficult. They should understand uh, what uh, the needs of their customers. They should be proactive. They should unite some market players, and it should be open collaboration. It should be open code base. They should open access to certain modules uh, when they just try to sell license. We have shifted away from this model, you know. Uh, it's a fact. Whether you are happy with this or not, if vendors don't take part in this, in this case, uh, we will create something without their participation. And actually, it's not a sensation. Uh, if we take uh, Turkey, they follow this model. Uh, banks have copied have pulled their forces together and they control the period who develops ABS. And actually, it's true for many organizations and uh, for many markets. It's true for them and it's a quite uh, normal approach. It works. Let me be, try and be brief. Uh, I agree with what Sergei was just saying. It seems like uh, large uh, players have money and uh, large uh, players are not interested in large uh, uh, ABS that should cover the whole uh, ABS but uh, there is a demand for modules uh, and these modules must be built correctly in terms of uh, their architecture functions into integration into the banking landscape and here the we have a greatest niche uh, the most important thing is to be uh, intelligent. Okay, just to summarize our discussion, I'd like to say the follow we, we have some time for questions uh, also. So what we have, uh, the ideal outcome uh, that uh, we of our discussion is kind of uh, creating uh, an ideal solution would be creating an open source uh, environment with the various modules and the vendors some of the vendors could be particular but uh, they must not be much different from a bank and uh, they, uh, it's quite a complicated future but uh, we still have time for a couple of questions there is a microphone if you'd like to ask if something please do please speak into the microphone 81 sergey now in the import substitution uh, there was an initiative of the government to create uh, uh, different uh, industrial centers of competencies and centers for the development just like andrea was uh, saying creating some kind of associations that could uh, help us to exchange experience uh, did it work or did it not work i'm a moderator just don't look at me i'm not going to answer that question now 
all these centers are being created for the uh, industry uh, moving in the right direction. If you see these centers of competen competencies are headed by the regulator. Of course, it uh, was quite effective uh, and uh, we, uh, we are reporting to the regulator and there are a lot of different meetings that are organized and we uh, invite vendors to those meetings and we listen to them also very importantly. I think that this was quite a um, exhaustive answer. Any other questions? Using this opportunity, because we still have a little time, I have a couple of questions, um, just probably that are wider than uh, uh, our agenda. MTS announced it's a platform, and the MTS Bank is living in a structure. It is part of the structure. So what is your vision? Is it an isolated bank or is it quite integrated into the... Uh, of course, we are part of an ecosystem, of a big ecosystem. We are coordinating everything because, uh, you know, just the number of active participants in the ecosystem. Is there, in IT, for example, we have 16 large clusters. In fact, we have more than that. But 16 major clusters uh, that everybody knows their names. And so what we are doing, we are organizing the import uh, substitution as a large uh, effort. But the bank has to report once uh, per quarter. Uh, the, a file is uh, sent to all the organization with the results, of, uh, describing the results of the work of the bank. Goals are set up, and there is some synergy when we look at. Uh, but uh, just like in any bureaucracy, of course, there are some disadvantages because sometimes it is difficult to make a decision, uh, and it, uh, and uh, there is no like uh, one fit for all solution. If you look at the report of Mark, Mark Webb, uh, you can see that in their functions, uh, all the banking applications are same. Top 10 banks, if you compare them, we do not, we're not different from any other bank. We're just like brothers. Or we're almost like, uh, you know, just uh, twins. But if you make some kind of a universal uh, application, then it's not going to sell, it's not going to work, it's not going to, it's not going to be possible. You know, some businesses may have some dreams about some kind of miracle. You know, miracles don't exist. So what's important here is that in the chase after unification, eco creating ecosystems, creating unified industry standard, we need to have also understanding that we're a little bit, a little bit different from each other. Even sitting here, uh, we are, we look different, don't we? Yeah. Uh, you made a call to write uh, an ABS. Can you just tell us more in detail about this idea? Where, what, uh, you know, just we should join, maybe we should, you know, just stand up in a queue or something. Well, the idea is that this topic is very expensive, very complicated and uh, very difficult to do. I believe that the main everybody has um, the main book, which is similar. You, you, know, you know, reports are also the same. The logs are same. Some basic uh, functions for settlement payments uh, are also same. We're competing probably in products uh, with uh, some higher level uh, solutions. We we are all similar, but actually, you know, just have only different colors. Like some companies a red one, in other companies a blue one, in other companies green one, but. At the top level, uh, marketers, uh, they think, uh, you know, if you put uh, a button in the right uh, place and put in the right color, then you will have more clients. Okay, but this is not a difficult task to do. But where you work uh, f doing some uh, centralized uh, functions uh, set up by the regulator, you don't need to create your own code. You can make you use some universal solutions. But uh, still... We are working on that. We work with banks and vendors in order to share this uh, burden. In other words, uh, to involve uh, all organizations into creating a basic configuration because basic configuration is similar. It's absolutely the same and it's clear for everyone. 
And the second thing is that the interfaces that uh, are going to be included into this system should also be quite universal and clear. Uh, and here it involves a more creative work because, you know, people may have different systems. If you look at the core banking, uh, if you look at the major log, uh, the main book, we need to have a look at the interface. We need to think on how to organize the interface. But, uh, you know, just uh, what's uh, under the hood, it's uh, these uh, things that should be streamlined. So this is not an idea, a new idea. So in spite of uh, spending money on things which are universal, it's better if we make it together and then uh, save money and then we can use it, can use it uh, jointly. OK, I understand that uh, you, all of us have different plans and going plans to go to other sessions. I hope that this was an interesting session. For me, at least, it was a very interesting session. Maybe somebody else also has enjoyed this session. I thank everyone and I wish you a good day. Thank you.